What's up? I'm Vin, and I want to go through five questions where we have to simplify compound fractional expressions. And as we simplify, I also want to talk about the x values that are not allowed. So what I mean by that is when we have a fraction, we have to be careful that we do not divide by zero. So notice that in this big fraction here, we have individual fractions like 1 over x. So if x were to equal zero, our entire expression here would be undefined. There are going to be more values that pop up, but I do want to mention this because when we do simplify, we can't say the original expression is always equivalent to the final expression for all x. So I'm just going to mention those values as we go through the examples. But now to actually start simplifying, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of the entire fraction by x. And the reason I'm doing that is the highlighted fractions have a least common denominator of x. So when we multiply, that's going to simplify things. So we distribute top and bottom. And for the top, what we're going to have is x times 1 is x, plus x times 1 over x is going to give us x over x. And then in the denominator, we have x times 1 over x is x over x. And then x times negative 2 is minus 2x. So then I'll write the result over here. We're going to have x plus 1, because we're doing x divided by x. And then we have x over x is 1. And then we have minus 2x. But now there's another x value that would make this expression undefined. So if 1 minus 2x were to be equal to 0, so 1 minus 2x equals 0 would give us an x solution of 1 half. So this tells us that x now cannot equal 0, and it also cannot equal a half. So we could say that this expression is equivalent to this expression for all x, except when x is equal to 0 or a half. Question two, we're going to simplify this compound fraction. But first, I want to talk about which x values are not allowed. So we cannot have any values of x that make us divide by 0. So here, if we look, let's say x were equal to negative 3, we would have negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And that fraction, we would have division by 0. So x is not allowed to equal negative 3. x cannot equal negative 1 because we would be dividing the entire thing by 0. So negative 1 is not allowed. And also, x equals positive 1 is not allowed because then the first fraction would have a 0 denominator. We might get more values at the end, so I always leave it open until the end. But for now, we'll just leave this be. So for the next step, we're going to multiply by the least common denominator of the fractions within the fraction. I'm not counting x plus 1 as a denominator because technically I could think of this as x plus 1 over 1. So that's the denominator I would be talking about when I'm thinking of the least common denominator. So I'm just going to be looking at those two. I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 1 times x plus 3. So I'm doing that on top, and I have to do this on bottom. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by x minus 1 times x plus 3. And then from here, we just have to distribute. So we're going to multiply the, oh, let's just make this neat. So we're going to multiply the first fraction by x minus 1, x plus 3, and the second fraction. So in the next line, we're going to have x minus 1 times x plus 3, and this is over x minus 1. And then we have plus, we're doing x minus 1 times x plus 3 times the fraction 1 over x plus 3. So this is just over x plus 3. And then the entire thing is over x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 3. So now we could cancel out stuff. We have x minus 1 over x minus 1 canceling. x plus 3 over x plus 3 cancels out. And we're left with x plus 3 on top plus x minus 1. And this is all over. We have x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 3. Okay, and from here, we combine like terms. We have x plus x is 2x plus we have 3 minus 1 is 2 over. And we have these three binomials. And it may not seem like we could do anything else, but we can factor out a greatest common factor of 2 on top. And we're left with an x plus 1, which will cancel out one of the factors on bottom. Okay, so we can cancel out the x plus 1s. And we are left with 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 3. Now, before I close this out, I do like to scan to see if there are any new x values that would make the denominator of the new expression equal to 0. But 1 and negative 3 we already stated. So we'll just say that these x values are not allowed. But these two expressions are equivalent for all other x that are not equal to negative 3, negative 1, and 1. Question 3 is a little bit more complicated because now we have x's and y's. 
But right away, I could see that x cannot be equal to 0. So x is not allowed to equal 0, and y is not allowed to be equal to 0, because that would give us division by 0 within these fractions. Notice that we have a fraction here, here, and then we have 2 down here as well. So the least common denominator of those four fractions is going to be x squared, y squared. So we're going to multiply by x squared, y squared, and let's see how this simplifies. So now in the next line, we have x squared, y squared times x is going to give us x to the third, y squared over y. And then we have minus, if we do x squared, y squared times y, that's x squared, y to the third, and this time we're over x. And then on bottom, when we multiply, we're going to have x squared, y squared over x squared. And then we have minus x squared, y squared over y squared. So here, we could just go ahead and cross out some common factors. y squared over y squared cancels. x squared over x squared cancels. But here, we just have to be a little careful. This is y to the first and x to the first. When we do y to the second over y to the first, this is going to re reduce down to y to the first. I'm using this idea from algebra. a to the b over a to the c is a to the b minus c. So if I do 2 minus 1, my leftover power is 1. And same idea with this. x to the second over x to the first will simplify to x to the first on top. So now what we have, I'll clean this up a bit. We have x to the third times y left on the first part minus we have x times y to the third. And this is all over. We're left with y squared minus x squared. So now from here, we could factor. So we're going to take out a greatest common factor on top of x times y. And when we divide these terms by x, y, we're going to be left with x squared and then minus y squared. Okay, so those are the leftovers. And we're over y squared minus x squared. But there's one thing I want to point out. Notice that this new expression here, we have a new denominator. y squared minus x squared is not allowed to equal 0. Okay, we cannot have this to be true. And we could factor this as y plus x times y minus x is not allowed to equal 0. So this tells us that y, I'll write the results over here, y is not allowed to equal negative x, and y is not allowed to equal x. Okay, so no matter which values we plug into this expression here, we are not allowed to plug in x is 0, y is 0. We can't have x and y be equal, and we can't have y equal negative x. So something like, let's say y equals 2 and x is equal to negative 2, this would not be allowed. Okay, so these are all of the restrictions on our expression. I just want to point this out because this might be something that you need to incorporate into your math when you're doing questions like this, depending on which level of math you're in. So from here... What I want to do is I want to factor this a little bit more. So we have x times y, and we have x squared minus y squared. But what I'm going to do is on bottom, I'm going to take out a negative 1. So I'm going to take out a negative 1, and that's going to reverse the signs. So now instead of having a minus x squared, I'm going to have a plus x squared, and I'm going to have a minus y squared. Okay, the reason I did that, because now these match completely, and they just cancel nicely. So x times y divided by negative 1 is just minus xy. So I could say that this original expression is equivalent to this one, except these values of x and y are not allowed. Question four, we're going to simplify this compound fraction. And I want to use this rule from algebra. When we have a to the negative b, we could rewrite this as 1 over a to the positive b. So I'm going to rewrite this expression as 1 over x squared minus 1 over y squared. And this is all over 1 over x plus 1 over y. So before we jump into this, let's talk about which x and y values right now are not allowed. We cannot have x equal to 0, and we cannot have y equal to 0. So these values are forbidden because we would have division by 0 with our denominators over here. And now what we'll do is we'll get rid of these fractions within the fraction. We're going to multiply the top and bottom by x squared, y squared, because this is the least common denominator of x squared, y squared, x and y. So now we'll write the result over here. So we're going to have x squared y squared times the first fraction is going to give us x squared y squared over x squared. And then we have minus, we're doing x squared y squared times the second fraction. And that gives us x squared y squared over y squared. And then we have to do the same thing on bottom. We're going to distribute. We have x squared y squared times 1 over x is x squared y squared over x. And then we have plus 
we're doing x squared y squared times 1 over y is x squared y squared over y. And now we could say this is equal to x squared over x squared cancels, y squared over y squared cancels. So, so far we have y squared minus x squared on top. And this is over. We have x squared over x to the first. The x is going to cancel and this will reduce down to x to the first. So we have x, y squared. And then we have plus. Here we're going to have y to the second over y to the first, reducing this down to y to the first on top. So we have plus x squared y. But now when we factor, we're going to have y plus x times y minus x. So we have a difference of two squares. And on bottom, we could take out an x, y, and we're left with y plus x after we factor that out. So we have another restriction here. We cannot have this factor on bottom equal to zero. We already said x and y can't be zero, so that takes care of the x, y piece. But we cannot have y plus x equal to zero. So the restriction for this question, the last one, is that y is not allowed to equal negative x, okay? So this is what we have to say so that when we get our final expression at the end, it's equivalent to the original except in this case or these cases over here. So now we just simplify y plus x over y plus x cancels, and this all simplifies to y minus x over xy. So here is our expression simplified. Question five, our last example, we're simplifying this compound fraction. And the first thing that jumps out at me is that x is not allowed to equal zero because if we have x equals zero, one over x is going to equal zero. We could also say that x equals one is no good because then we would have one minus one is zero and that gives the denominator of this fraction equal to zero as well. So those are the restrictions that we're gonna mention off to the side here. We have x is not allowed to equal zero and x cannot be equal to one. So now we'll go ahead and solve this. We need to get rid of this fraction on bottom. So we're gonna multiply by x over x. And now we're gonna have one minus and we have x on top over, we distribute, and we have x times one is x minus x times one over x is x over x. So now in the next line over here, we have one minus, and I'm gonna leave a little space. We have x over x minus x over x is one. Now to combine these here, I'm gonna make common denominators. So I'm gonna multiply one by x minus one over x minus one. That way we have matching denominators. So when we do one times x minus one, that's x minus one over x minus one, and we are subtracting x over x minus one. So now we can combine. We have x minus one minus x over x minus one. And from here, x minus x cancels out. And we are left with negative one over x minus one. But remember, these expressions are equivalent for all x values that are not equal to zero and one.